welcome back. It's me again, living somewhere different. But come in, because it's another big day training, Tom Coleman, Legs of Physique Gym. So typically would start my day having breakfast um, and doing some online check-ins. So that's what we're doing today. But today being a leg day, and I tend to have one hard leg day once a week and maybe a top-up leg day later in the week. So on a big leg day comes a big amount of food. So I have a high day. And a high day for me is higher amount of carbs. So it's not all complex carbs because they're very filling. And so today's, what we try and do is lower the protein slightly with easy to digest protein, increase the carbs with simpler, easy to digest carbs and a little bit of fat per meal just to hold them carbs so they don't burn through you and cause insulin spikes. So the first meal of the day is white fish. So I've got white fish and there's about 150 grams of tilapia there with 10 grams of uh, coconut oil put on top which helps the fish go down because it tastes bleh. And we've also got probably one of my favourite things to eat is cream of rice with 100 grams of blueberries, so there's 120 grams of cream of rice there as well. Uh, and then on top of the cream of rice, we've got four rice cakes that I'll spread a like a whole sugar jam on, so not a reduced this, that, the other typical normal jam, and that will help bump the carbs up with, without the volume in your stomach. So if you tried to do that all with oats, you'd be having 200 grams of oats and you wouldn't be training legs in an hour. So that's what we'll be doing today. <laughs> Myself and Tom, bonjour. bonjour, are here to train a French leg session. So, <laughs> so we can see how we get down. Physique's one of the best equipped leg gyms in this area, so they've got some great new stuff. We've trained down here before once on legs and we're going to get it all on camera today. So Tom's going to take one exercise and I'll take one and the combination will work out a great session. So follow us. Starting his first day of prep today, they don't even know what he's supposed to be eating, when or what, and if you don't like it, he's chocolate rice cakes. <laughs> it's been four years. Four years. Four years. That's my next meal. Oh, mince and potatoes. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> up, 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 up. All right. Easy, man. For those that don't know, I actually broke my back about 10 years ago now. So I got round it after about a couple of years to be able to train again. But there are certain exercises that inflame my lower back. So I still train with two slip discs. But there's a will, there's a way. So I kind of work around it every rehab, like once every few weeks to keep it all in check and uh, just pray nothing else breaks when I train legs each time. My truck. Oh, right. It went into uh, all the body work done in it because I ate the back end of it. I'll tell you about that. I've, I've had a nightmare with cars. So we went to go do the pictures a little while ago. On the way to the pictures, my phone wouldn't connect to the sat nav. So I got the up and I hit the screen and broke the screen. Saw that, yeah. Yeah, so then I put the brakes, I went, oh fuck it, we'll go home. I've reversed, as I reversed, I've got into a tree. So I've done the bumper, the tailgate, and the lid. And then it, when I was going into Harlow like the following week to get it looked at, someone slammed their brakes on in front of me. So I've done the front of it. And then uh, the other day I dropped it into a mate and he was like, oh, I'll just take one of the cars on the forecourt. So I took the Ranger. It's got a nice Range Rover Vogue, right? Driving it home, the petrol uh, oil light come on and it went in limp mode. So I rang him up and he goes, oh, I just put oil in it. It's been on a forecourt for ages. He goes, just fill it right up. So I filled it right up. Flooded the engine. Smoking, won't drive, 
weakened position in that your feet are like that so heels are together toes are pointing out and your knees fall over the line of your toes and then what that does is push more emphasis on the outside of your thigh or on your outer sweep if you want to take it even further on your feet put the weight on your little toe so you're pushing on the outside of your feet as well and that'll help emphasize the sort of side of your legs I wouldn't go narrow feet normally uh, I never, there's certain machines and styles I stay away from. Just because it plays on my, on my outer quad and on my knees a little bit. But yeah, I don't tend to go narrow feet a lot. I've stepped away from squatting as well nowadays. I used to, uh, used to love squatting heavy, I used to love it. And my knees, no, I just can't really take it no more. Now, if I squat, because of my back injury, I just blows my back and then I end up causing more back issues and leg development. I find, yeah, I find it find a bit bits on my knees and my quad hurts and it just messes you up for more training. And it's not worth it, is it really? Gotta rein that ego in a little bit now again. I think like if you're starting out at home and you're young and you're you know, fresh, you should definitely be squatting. I squatted for, you've got to remember, I've been training 26 years and Tom's been training, how long? About 16, about a good 12 years. But I think once you go past 10 years of training, like hard and heavy, it does wear on your joints. I mean, the amount of people I had as a gym owner that would come in and say, they can't squat because they've got knee problems or back problems, but they've only been training a minute. Yeah. Just an excuse, buddy. If I go back to squatting now and I do four plates, it's hard because I don't do it every week. Whereas I used to do six plates. But then I could do four plates now and I'd be injured for a week after with little niggling injuries and then I wouldn't. So it's about longevity a little bit. You do have to adapt to your age and your training like years and stuff as well. So it's uh, as long as you see progress, it's about progress. It's not really about the lift, what loads of muscle more. I actually think the hack squat is one of the easiest uh, machines to develop your quads because you can focus on it the most. I think you've got to do a squatting movement, they don't have to be a free bar. That's why I think it's probably the way to look at it. But the way that it loads down your body causes your whole body to grow. Yeah, it's nice. You get some hack squats with a bit, put a bit of pressure on you, but this one's lovely, man. It's smooth, isn't it? I like the way I got away with said I've been training since I was 16 and so that's 12 years. I'm 28 mate, I'm 28. <laughs> I didn't catch that, did you? You're 28. <laughs> two working sets to failure but because there's so much we'll probably move on from here and then tackle another machine. Ah, ah, touch! Right, 
So if you're a competitor and you're looking at bringing in the high point of your sweep or the, the lines that come in at the top near your hips, move the seat back and focus on squeezing from up here. If your tear drops the issue with you, have the seat in a normal sort of position where you're further forward and so it'll bring the load closer to your kneecap or above your knees on your tear drop. So for me, I've got really quite big tear drops, so I try and lean back as much as I can to forget them and bring the load up higher. Baby. Baby, you've been blaming me, ooh, yeah, yeah Baby, baby, lately I've been trying So yeah, the idea now is to increase the load, try and repeat the reps. The ideal weight is one that the first set of 12 you can do okay, you know, finish the set. And then the second set of 10, you can just barely make it or you don't quite get 10. And the third set, you're way off eight, you're about six reps. So you're pushing to failure pretty much each time. That's the ideal weight, so it'll probably happen this set.
single or the, uh, the hack there, that was quite nice last time. Go wide with that or... Go wide with that. Yeah. Because then you ain't got to go mad anyway. But the single leg press, like, for the ladies at home anyway, single leg press is the best at annihilating your ass. Like it really hits your glutes, doesn't it? To do it slow, like four second range of motion both ways, it really, really targets your glutes. So any girls that can't get your butt firing at home, try that. But I'll do that last because my butt's peaky enough. Because I'm sure he said that he's coming back before. What are you doing this year, Tom? Um, I'm competing again. I'm making, I'm making a comeback. Four years I'm on a stage. Going to do classic. Uh, July something. Win that. Do the Arnold's. Win that. Get an invite to Olympia. That's a goal anyway. That's a Right, good goal to add. That's the goal. <laughs> it is to... Uh, you need a wingman, you know, like that. I'll carry your luggage. Put be your nice. It'd be nice to get a pro card and another fed. Yeah, true. And I've got four pro cards in. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to do it. I've always said I wanted to do classic. And you're only four now, doing the PCA universe where there's a bit of money, isn't it? That's true, but that's made. I've got plenty of time. My normal preps take like eight weeks. I never really go off season or like. No, you don't. And I've I've been a little bit lazy through lockdown, but training's still good. Intensity is still high. I'm 92, so I'm the heaviest I've been off season. Okay. Like, I never really. When I go on season, last time I was a bed, push me up to 101, and I felt stodgy, but lean as anything full. Yeah. yeah. So I'm interested to see what Joe does this time. Um, like I said, I'm 92, so I haven't lost anything. So the plan is to eat, to build a little before you come down? Yeah, so this is, we got like 16 weeks. So this is my longest prep ever. So yeah. So see what happens. But again, it's, all my other classes I've done, it's never been a height and weight thing. Whereas classic, isn't it? So I've got to count that in. Because I'm 5'11". Really? You know, I'll make the I'm, 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 flat, I'm five eight and three quarters. Uh, so I think I've got to come in at like, 86, I think. Something like that. Okay. Oh, that's, that's easy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's easy. That'd be easy for you. Yeah, yeah. I bet you were that in lockdown, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think I was actually. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, Mike. Oh, you looked ill. <laughs> you looked ill. <laughs> you looked ill. <laughs> Let's go. Old man. Is it really you? because thinking every workout is very very beneficial to put a single limb exercise in we've all got like imbalances in our body so if you don't do a single leg you'll never find that out or we don't do a single arm curl or a single shoulder press you'll always use a fixed bar so this will help even that out but also helps you isolate one side at a time which really increases the intensity and focus on the muscle plans for the year good question <laughs> So I haven't made any exact plans, that's why. Um, but I haven't had a year off competing for 26 years. And even like I mentioned that time I broke my back, I ended up competing within a year of that. So obviously I was restricted what I could do, but I still managed to do it. So I will do something, I tend to look at aiming to the end of summer or autumn time. Otherwise, if you end up competing, what I found, if you end up competing early in the April, 
Easter months, you've got to hang on to some sort of condition because you're going to get to a finals just after summer. So you end up almost being in prep a whole year. So you don't make much progress and it's absolutely mind numbing. So I'm going to try and hold on to that until I get closer to, uh, to the end of summer. But what typically happens is I book a holiday, do a little bit of a trim up for the holiday, I think halfway there now, carry on. So we'll see. But yeah, the end of the year I think is the best bet.